Good morning, hello, and welcome to the State and History, a.k.a. TDH. This show is all about the events that occurred to date in years past, both recognized by other historians, but mainly things we personally find intriguing enough for us to bring to you. The sources of this information come from the Smart Device application Today in History, What Happened Today in History, Historical Calendar, and the website on thisday.com. For links to the sources, the music, and anything else potentially interesting, check the underbar of the description below. Anyway, I am Aozander, and today I am joined by... Uh, Ramasur, a.k.a. Doom Guy, a.k.a. Jebediah Abraham, uh, a.k.a. Uh, various other uh, monikers that I can't remember. And anyway, of course, you, viewer, are you. Today is Saturn's Day, a.k.a. Saturday, March, not March, April, uh, what month is it? Uh, uh, April 15th, uh, 2023. My brain just doesn't want to work. Anyway, I didn't have uh, the uh, the ability to, well, actually, I'm just lazy to research right yesterday, so we'll just... Uh, do the show the old style here. Going to start us off in the year 69. Nice. Battle of Bedericam in North Italy. All right. Doing a pretty big time jump here to 1250. Kublai was acclaimed the Great Khan. Khan! By a Mongol Great Council. Kublai Khan. Why is that not highlighted? That's a very big thing right there. Why did I click that? Anyway, we're going to jump on up to 1385. At war with Castile, John I of Portugal instructed his ambassadors to negotiate an alliance with Richard II of England and to raise loans to pay his troops. All right. 1493, uh, or 20 the 4th, or whatever. I don't know. I guess that's a different calendar style. Uh, Columbus met with the Spanish monarchs, uh, monarchs Isabella I and Ferdinand II in Barcelona. All right. Now, as we all know... Uh, Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1494? Actually, 1492. Okay, yeah. Um, man, I'm, I'm stupid today. Uh, so I guess uh, this is after he came back. We're going to jump to 1534. Thomas Cromwell was appointed Chief Secretary to King Henry VIII of England. Ah, I just saw a video about King Henry VIII uh, just the other day. Uh, here we go. We have good old felt thimblehead here. 1581, Portuguese assembly, the, uh, the Cortes of Tomar, recognized Philip II of Spain as King of Portugal after a succession crisis. Huh. All right. Moving on up to 1621, Hugo Grotius arrived in France after escaping prison in a book chest. Huh. The old book chest uh, ploy. I want to welcome to the show... The Golden Noon. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Hey, we're both in robes. I know, it's cold. It is, it is. It's only 58, though. Actually, whoa, that was weird. It was 53 literally 10 minutes ago. What the hell? It's heating up. It's going to be in the 70s today, so we haven't had much of that. Yeah, well, you know, I I, I embrace the cold as long as it stays. Because, you know, as I always say, with cold, you can just keep on putting more and more blankets. You know, just snuggle in your bed, watch a movie, have a good time. With the heat, it's just misery. You know, it's just sweat and, and pain and, and agony and, you know, there's only so much you can take off before you can no longer leave your house because you might break a federal law or two. You know, nobody appreciates to be naked people, you know. I'm liking those new glasses. I, I, I love these glasses. They're great. Yeah, I know. Yeah, they're really good. Yeah, no, like uh, I, I said uh, something about it yesterday, like, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking down here at me, I'm like, I can't stop, but... I mean, I, I'm not an egocentric person, but I can't stop staring at my new glasses. Like, <laughs> I, I, They're so good. Anyway, 1689, French King Louis the Fourteenth uh, declare war on Spain. Ah, and he looks very chiquoise. Look at that little mustache. <laughs> yeah, very little. So, uh, 1697, Charles the Twelfth succeeded his father Charles the Eleventh as King of Sweden. All right. We got a music premiere in 1729. Johann Sebastian Bach's Saint Matthew Passion premiered at the. Thomas Kirsch in Leipzig, Holy Roman Empire, which is now Germany. All right. 1738, Circe, an Italian opera by George Frederick Handel, premiered at the King's Theatre in Haymarket, London. Okay. Mm. 1755, Samuel Johnson's A Dictionary of the English Language was published in London. Dictionaries, always, you know, really yeah. good. Oh. Uh, 1783, during the U.S. or during the American Revolution... Uh, the Continental Congress ratified preliminary articles of peace, ending the seven-year-long war with Great Britain. Why is that not highlighted? Really? Yeah, uh, but that, uh, yeah, that should be... Of course, this is a leftist source, so they're trying to bury all this stuff, you know. 
Well, they've already changed the dates, right, of uh, when we were found and all that, 1619 project and all that stuff. What? You haven't heard of that? 1619 project? I, I, it sounds vaguely familiar, and, but, oh, That's God. That's when slaves were brought here? Oh, my God. That's not our country. So, 1793, Bank of England issued the first five-pound note. Huh. Huh. Well, I don't... Oh, okay. Well, you know, the first, you know, bank note, yeah, you know, dollar know. bill, you know, yeah. so. Um, which, like, you know, like, that's that's uh, interesting. I, I, I wonder how many of those people can carry before becoming overburdened, you know, because five pounds doesn't seem like a lot. But, like, you know, you have three notes, that's 15 pounds. So, yeah. you know, that, that starts weighing on you. <laughs> I knew where you were going. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't know what's with Britain and their heavy money, but, you know, whatever. Anyway, 1802, William Wordsworth and his sister Dorothy saw a long belt of daffodils inspiring the former to pen, I wandered lonely as a cloud. Huh. Okay. Uh, 1817, the first uh, U.S. school for deaf opened at Hartford, Connecticut. Oh, now uh, that's big. Yeah. Um, oh. Uh, that, at the same time, I think this is the same thing. The American Asylum, which is now the American School for Deaf, ASD, the first permanent U.S. School for Deaf founded by Reverend Thomas uh, Gallaudet, Dr. Mason Cogswell, and teacher Lawrence Church, West Hartfield, Connecticut. Hartford. I wonder so why this they is have, the same, yeah, one. same thing. Well, what's the deal? Um, I don't know. Like, it's literally saying the same thing, yeah. but with more information and longer. Yeah. So, oh, 1850, the city of San Francisco was incorporated. Oh, huh. I can unincorporate that baby. Yeah, we can. Anyway, we're going to jump on up to 1861. The Federal Army of 75,000 volunteers was mobilized by U.S. President Abraham Lincoln for the Civil War. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, 75,000 seems like so small in today's world now. It is, well, of course it is, <laughs> but uh, that's a big number to uh, a, a volunteers, you know. That's, yeah. uh, that's a big number. Mm-hmm. And that's the initial uh, salvo. Yep. 1862, U.S. poet Emily Dickinson first corresponded with author and future literary literary mentor Thomas Wentworth Higginson, a relationship that lasted the rest of her life. Nice. Mm, really yeah. cool. Emily Dickinson. You know. Yeah, oh, big. <laughs> yep. And here we go. 1865, Abraham Lincoln died nine hours after he was shot by John Wilkes Booth while attending the play Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater in Washington. Mm. That's tragic. That's one of my regrets when we were in D.C., that we, just for time elements, we couldn't get there or get back uh, to see the Ford Theater. Well, they were running tours, and, like, weren't, weren't they closed for renovations? I no, swear. No, they were open, but when they were, our hotel was right around the corner from it. Yeah. And uh, we were out and about before they opened, and we got back by the time they closed. So yeah. we never, we had to wait for them to open. We didn't want to do that. Yeah. Well, you know, like, it... it if you want to be a tourist, like, unless you have a lot of money and a lot of time, there's no way to see everything, or, no. or even half of everything. No. Probably like, would have been disappointing. You know, you have this thing, yeah, you'd like to see it, because it's such a point in history. But what is that picture right there of that bed? That's supposed uh, to be him. That's his deathbed. That's where ah. he died on. Okay. So, uh, the bed on which Abraham Lincoln died hours after being shot by John Wilkes Booth, t- taken shortly after Lincoln's body was removed. Nah. So Lincoln was there. Yeah. Yeah, man. Uh, 1865, Mobile, Alabama was captured by Union forces after a siege led by General Canby. All right. Yeah, while that was happening in 1865 as well, Otto von Bismarck was elevated to the rank of Count of Bismarck uh, Schohansen. All right. Oh, this is interesting. Uh, 1870, last day U.S. silver coins allowed to circulate in China, in Canada. China. <laughs> a little bit different. Uh, it starts with a C. So, Last I mean, day U.S. silver coins. Yeah. Okay. I mean, China, China, Canada, what's the difference in today's world anymore? You know? <laughs> Ooh. So. Easy there. Easy. Well, You're both talking go- to a Canadian. Both governments are killing its own people. Yeah, I know. So. Canada's gone. So it's complete to shit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, hey, I, I, you know, I don't like, you know, I'm not a hateful person. I'm just ragging on them because they, they've earned it. So, but yeah, I, they, I, they I do turn. love Canada. I used to, at least. So. Well, politically, it's gone down the tubes. Yeah. For me. And uh, see, like you know, f- you know now, thankfully, uh, I'm like you know, I'm 36 and I'm no longer in the prime of my life. But I feel very, very you know, 
worried for the younger generations because now if we do have a civil war or something and we have a draft who's who is people where's where are people gonna like flee to not canada not anymore certainly not mexico so yeah at least back in your day you had an out so 1874, first Impressionist exhibition opened in Paris, featured Claude Monet, Edgar Degens, Pierre Auguste de Renoir, Camille Pizarro, and Berthe Morsant. All right. Is that Monet? Uh, yeah, Claude Monet. Not Monet. Monet. I, I don't know. <laughs> That's okay. Monet, Monet, whatever. <laughs> like. Anyway, um, ooh. 1877, Boston Somerville installed the world's first telephone in Massachusetts. Ooh. So I wonder if that's like, well, it has to be the world's first period. So, <laughs> really, <yeah. laughs> what? Oh, nothing. <laughs> I like father, I like son. Uh huh. Uh, 1880, Guy de uh, Maupassant's short story masterpiece *Boil de Suif, or *Dumpling* was first published in the collection *Les Sorrises de Madame*. Okay. 1892, General Electric Company formed by merger of Thomas Edison's General Electric Company with Thomas uh, with Thompson Houston Electric Company, arranged by J.P. Morgan and incorporated in New, in New York. Oh, man, all these big monies, like... Oh, J.P. Morgan. Yeah, like, oh, man, that was... Uh, if I had a time machine, I'd love to go back in time and just start blasting these people in the face, so... Hey, well, uh, the only thing we can say about stuff coming out of the right side... Uh, AC finally overcame uh, DC power, which yeah. changed everything. DC would have never, never yep. worked. Yep. Uh, we got. Uh, let's see here. We've already talked about the first modern. What is this? Uh, 1895 is Josephine Blatt of the U.S. made hip and harness lift of uh, 3,564 pounds, which is a record. So I guess like you know, lifting something with a harness, like physically, I, I don't know. Hip and harness lift. Let's. Uh, no, no, no. That's gonna be. Uh, that's gonna be weightlifting. Oh, oh I no, see. No, it's not. No, it is like that. Looks like weightlifting to me. Oh, oh, oh! No, they're they're lifting it with their with their legs. Yeah. So like they have they have that whole thing, but instead of like you know like up, they just lift with their legs. Yeah. So this guy lifted with his legs three thousand five hundred sixty four pounds. Yeah. Holy crap! That's that's one in in three quarters. Uh, uh, tons like because a ton is 2,000 pounds is that what it is yep so a metric ton is, is 1,000 pounds but an imperial ton our unit of measurement is 2,000 pounds so that's 2,000 you know plus yeah. another three quarters so wow uh, anyway we got uh, let's see uh, 1901 first British motorized burial huh what so I guess like you know with a with a uh, like, uh, uh, with a Cars and such, with a hearse. Hearses used to be horse and buggies. Yeah. And so you know, this is a motorized burial, as in they 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 drove cars. There was a okay automobile hearse instead of a horse and buggy. Okay. So. The burial isn't the right word there. Uh, it should be brigade or something. Motor brigade. Well, then people wouldn't really understand what that is. Like it's it's something Funeral for brigade. a burial. Okay. Funeral brigade. That make more sense. I'm trying to think of something going in the ground motorized. You yeah. Know? <laughs> Actually, I saw that last night. Um, uh, the second movie we saw last night was uh, Something McQuaid, uh, like an old 80s movie with Chuck Norris. Oh, um, okay. And they actually buried him in his car, but he had some kind of supercharger, and he literally drove himself out of the buried hole. <laughs> oh, it was so crazy. <laughs> uh, then again, it's Chuck Norris. You yeah, know? there so. you go. Uh, 1901, Pope Leo the Thirteenth issued an uh, allocution deploring hostile actions against the Roman Catholic Church throughout Europe. Allocution. Well, I, I know I'm pronouncing that wrong. What is that? I don't know. Uh, a formal speech giving advice or warning. Huh. You uh, pronounced it right. There you go. Uh, uh, allocution. Allocution. Uh, well, when all else fails, phonetiquette, you know? Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to add that in the underbar of the description below later on. Let's jump on up here. Sports history here, 1910. We talked about this yesterday. William Howard Taft was the first U.S. president to throw out the first ball at a baseball game, thus starting that tradition. Ah. So, nice. Okay. Yeah. I wonder if he threw a strike. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's kind of it's kind of ironic that our, our heaviest president at like 350 pounds, you know, they believe, 
Oh, uh, wow. Is that what was, he was? Well, he, 250, 350. Yeah, like whatever. He, he was big. Big man. It's ironic that he would start a sport tradition. <laughs> yeah. You know? Besides weightlifting. Well, I, I, didn't, <laughs> I don't think he'd be a weightlifter. I don't know. But again, men were a lot tougher back then. Uh, 1911, Walter Johnson pitched a record tying four strikeouts in an inning. Okay. Wait a minute. Yeah, that's possible. All right. Because there's three outs. You know, you strike out, you're out. There's uh, one, two, so there's four outs. Ah. Uh, you know how that works? If you strike out, but the catcher doesn't catch the ball, mm -hmm. you can run down to first base, and if he beats the throw, you're safe. Is that part of the line? <laughs> No, no, but that's true. Yeah. So obviously that's what happened. He struck out and he missed the ball or uh, went past him or whatever. Maybe he was, uh, huh, who knows what Walter Johnson would do. He's a great pitcher. And here we go. Very significant moment in history. 1912, the RMS Titanic sunk at 2.27 in the morning off Newfoundland as the band plays on with the loss of between 1,490 and 1,635 people, most of which were men. Yeah. So where where's our equality now, huh? You know? Like, yeah, when, this, when it's sinking, nobody asked for equality. Yep. Oh. 1915, New York giant Rube Bargord, no hits, Bicklin, whatever that is, two to none. B-K-L-N. Brooklyn. What is Bicklin? Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. B-K-L-A is short for Brooklyn. Why can't you just spell Brooklyn? <laughs> I like, don't know. They like, had... Like, they, they, what they, is this, a New court York? of law? Okay. Are you, no, are no, you no. writing in shorthand? They also, like, they also put NY for New York, but you're familiar with that one. Well, yeah, because... Brooklyn, but that would have been the Dodgers. All right. Their mom's team went down the tubes. That's unfortunate. We got a historic publication in 1918. Georges Clemenceau published secret French slash Austrian documents. Okay, mm -hmm. he was a prime minister of France, so oh, so he published them. So he 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 made it known, or or what? Like public to see. Well, yeah, mm. he published them. Uh, 1920, the new Canadian small cent coin was released. I wonder what it smelled like. <laughs> It's a small scent, you know. Very faint. Huh. Yeah. Hard to distinguish. Yep. Uh, let's see here. 1923, the first sound on film public performance shown at Ray, uh, Rialdo's Theater in New York City. Okay. All right. Ooh, wow, that was happening. Insulin. First sound on film. Yeah. Wow. Was that Mammy or whatever it was by uh, Al Jolson? Uh, first sound on film public performance. You know what? Let me... Let's check this out. Uh, let's see here. Tumblr. So, uh, uh, okay. Well, uh, this is gonna... Why is there a brain tumor operation link here? Um, I'm not sure if it's <laughs> Mammy. Uh, but, uh, yeah, you said Mammy? Yeah, Al Jolson was it. I think it's, I think it was Mammy. That's what he's saying. I don't know if that was the name of the movie. Oh, okay. There he is, yeah. Uh, Hi, Mammy. I guess. Uh, release. I think this is going to be something that's going to require a lot more digging. That, so, that was a, supposedly the first... 1930 uh, film, and this was 1923, so no. Okay, so I thought uh, his was the first uh, sound movie. Oh, and he's in blackface. Oh, that's not good. Uh, <laughs> not good at all. Whoops. <laughs> Although I guess I should have known with the, with, the, with the name of the title. It probably would have been racially uh, insensitive. Uh, anyway, 1923, insulin became generally available for diabetics. Ooh. Why is that not highlighted? That's huge. Yeah. Yeah, c come on, leftist source. Stop being so leftist. Oh. Moving on up to 1927, Yankee slugger Babe Ruth hit number one of MLB record season 60 home runs, teed off on A's Howard M.K. in first inning of New York's 6-3 win over Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. All right. One of 60. Okay, this is something I'd like to be a part of if it ever happens again. 1931, first backwards walk across America began. <laughs> Take, you know, talk about one step forward, two steps back, you know? Like, yeah. Oh, uh, 1941, first helicopter flight of one hour duration occurred at Stratford, Connecticut. Okay. Cool. 
1924, or 1942, George VI awarded George Cross to people of Malta. So that has to be, you know, that's obviously during the Second World War, and Malta was under a lot of siege. So, okay. uh, yeah, it was, I think uh, Malta was part of uh, Greece, I'm not sure. But I do know that uh, the Germans did, you know, go in there and take it over, or the Italians, one of those, or both. I don't know. Probably all, be the Italians initially, anyways. I don't know. All I know is that there is some like, like uh, old. Uh, I think it was like the original Call of Duty. Uh, in the campaign, there was a level where you fight in Malta. You para drop in, mm. and uh, you fight in there. And I remember fighting a bunch of Germans. But then again, uh, like you know, most World War II games, if not all of them, were you know obviously just. German and U.S. centric. Yeah. They didn't have models for the other armies, so maybe it was Italians. I'm not sure. Uh, but anyway, oh, oh, I know this one. Uh, 1945, the British Army liberated the Nazi concentration camp of Bergen-Belsen. Mm. Do you want to know why that is uh, so familiar to me? Why? You remember that um, Weekend Wonderings video I had with Mr. Gentlemental a long time ago, the guy with the voice? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And we yeah. did that oh, whole thing. Oh yeah. That was involving Bergen-Belsen. Oh, that's right. The Great Hare Hunt. Yeah. So. Uh huh. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, and I know I have almost a thousand videos literally on my YouTube right now, but uh, uh, if you can go go uh, go check out the Weekend Wanderings, the one and only episode we ever did, unfortunately, but it it was really good. It was really so. good. No, I'll back that up. That was one of the best videos you made. Thank you. I just need to find that guy again, or somebody like him. Uh, 1945, FDR buried in grounds of Hyde Park home. Okay. What? Uh, he died. Oh. Buried. So Hyde Park, yeah, of his yeah. Hyde Park home. Yeah. So he's buried there. Uh, 1945 as well, Pope Pius XII published encyclical Communum uh, Interpretis Dolorum. Uh, I can't speak uh, Warhammer 40K or, or Latin. Uh, but what is this? Uh, uh, it's uh, at the ending of World War II in Europe, uh, appealing to for prayers for peace during May, given at Rome at St. Blah, 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 in the seventh year of his pontificate. All right, I'm going to add uh, this wiki into the underbar in the description below. Further uh, reading for anybody who does so wish on their own time. Moving on up to 1947, Jackie Robinson because became the first black U.S. citizen to play in U.S. Major League Baseball for the Dodgers. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, just... Blew the doors wide open with that. Good. Absolutely. So, yep. It's a long time coming. Yep. We got an event of interest here in 1955. Ray Kroc opened the first McDonald's Inc. fast food restaurant in Dave's Plains, Illinois. Ah. Well, with how McDonald's is today, this guy is a crock of something. So, but yeah. Well, he bought that from the uh, McDonald's brothers, so he must be talking about... Maybe Ray Kroc Inc. was became his. Obviously, uh, he opened that in Illinois, <clears throat> but it wasn't the first McDonald's ever opened. Mm. Kind of misleading there. Well, now I know why I don't <clears throat> like McDonald's um, at the basis level. Why? Because it's very Illinoising. Oh, boo! But you know how vicious that guy was. Or oh yeah, <clears throat> I the founder. <clears throat> I gotta watch the founder. Like, I gotta add that to my movie list. You know the founder, right? The movie? Yeah. It's about the founder of McDonald's and all ah. that stuff, and there's actually a, um, like a, like an appearance of Burger King, you know, the, the, that guy and all that stuff. Uh, there's actually a really interesting scene where some guy, like, you know, involving uh, some kind of business thing, and he, he went there and he got a burger and everything, and, um, like, he, he was just treated like... Uh, like like everybody else. He was like, you know, oh, you're that guy. Okay, oh, let me give you special two. Or blah, blah, blah. Like, no, enjoy your burger. Have a good one. I'll talk with you when you're uh, done with your lunch. Mm. Like, you know. Uh, it, it's an interesting scene. I'm not selling it very well. But uh, 1957, Saturday mail delivery restored in the U.S. after Congress gave the post office $41 million. Wow. Bail out, bail out, bail out. Look well, at that. It's a government institution. you got to keep it afloat. Well, if it's if it's not self-sustaining, should it be afloat? You know. Do you want mail? No. <laughs> Do I want to get advertisements in my mailbox every day that I just 
throw in the trash well, while constantly being... Actually, it's a good question. Do we still need the mail when there's so much electronic communication? Yeah. yeah. Well, see, here's the thing. I think you do. As somebody in California, I'm constantly being berated. Oh, environmentalism, we have to save the trees. We have to do this. Blah, blah. Okay, well, then why are you not going to freaking AAA and yelling at them for sending us two of the same magazine because we share an address? You know? Go after them. Leave me alone. 1958, 10th Emmy Awards, Gunsmoke, Robert Young, and Jane Wyatt won. All right. Oh, and here we go. 1958, first baseball game in California. Mm. San Francisco Giants defeated the L.A. Dodgers 8 to none. Ooh. Not good. I, I, I guess they dodged getting a point. Yeah. So. But, yeah, the Dodgers moved to L.A. and the, uh, the Giants moved to uh, San Francisco. Huh. So Open they're both the foreign Coast. teams. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's interesting. It was the uh, New York Giants and then the uh, uh, Brooklyn Dodgers. You know, in a kind of weird way, I guess that's the sporting version of colonization. You know? They, they're yeah. from foreigner. They come, they come over here, you know? Yeah. Anyway, 1959, Fidel Castro began a U.S. Goodwill tour. Okay. What does that mean? Let's, he uh, did he come here? Or? He apparently so. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, he did. Well, he was still, uh, he was backed by, Castro was backed by the U.S. for his invasion and to overthrow Tito initially. Uh, until and he decided not to become our puppet. Once he took over, then he said, no, I'm really a commie. Yeah. You know, Russia's <laughs> my pal. We got played. Yeah. 1959, U.S. Secretary of State John Foster Dole has resigned. All right. And I want to go back to Fidel Castro, like, because yeah. there's something, like, like, the CIA tried to assassinate him, like, 50, 60 some odd times. It's really? Tr it's truly crazy. And they literally tried to do a Looney Tunes with him. They, 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 uh, somehow got, like, an interception of his, like, cigar delivery. And then they put a stick of dynamite or something in one of the cigars. Literally, Bugs, try to Bugs Bunny this guy. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? The old blowing up cigar trick? Really? Wow. Like, <laughs> so... Anyway, we're going to move on up to 1963. Steve oh, Allen's yeah. musical Sophie, based on the life of U.S. singer and comic actress Sophie Tucker, opened at Winter Garden Theater in New York City, running for a paltry eight performances. So, Steve Allen, what a great talent. All right. Writer, he had his own, uh, he was like, he was pre-Johnny uh, Carson. Ah. Like the, yeah, and that's what the format was his, uh, like the Tonight Show. I, I read this wrong. 1964... Chesapeake Bay Bridge opened, and at the end, at that time, it was the world's largest. At first, I thought it said Cheapsake Bay, Bay Bridge. I'm like, what? I don't want to go on a bridge called Cheapskate. It might collapse. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what is this Chinese-made piece of crap? 1965, James Baldwin's 1954 stage drama, The Amen Corner, uh, opened at Ethel Barrymore Theater in New York City, ran, running for 84 performances. Dang. Like, he kind of looks like a caricature. Yeah. Like, but, uh, uh. Moving on up, we got an album released in 1966. This guy who looks like uh, an old version of George Takei. Uh, the Rolling Stones released Aftermath, their fourth studio album in the UK, and it was the sixth in the US. Mm. All right. We got some more sports history here. In 1968, Houston Astros defeated the New York Mets one to none in 24 innings at the Astrodome. Starting uh, starting pitchers Tom Seaver and Don Wilson pitched 10 and 9 innings respectively in the game that lasts over six hours. God. Wow. 24 innings. Yeah. <clears throat> wow. Whatever happened to it? It's, it's supposed to be the past time, not the consumed time. <laughs> you know. Oh. Oh, this is not good. Uh, 1969, North Korea shot at a U.S. airplane above the Japanese Sea. Not Whoa. their jurisdiction. Wow. Uh, we spoke uh, yesterday about uh, a Korean plane getting shot down by the Soviet Union. So, yeah. We got the 43rd Academy Awards in 1971. Patton, damn right it does. George C. Scott, damn right he does. And Glenda Jackson won. George C. Scott, one of the you know great actors. Yeah. And Patton, anyway. yeah. Mm. Was, I assume he's still alive, I don't know. Oh, no, he's dead. Long oh, dead. He? Yeah, he died in 99, yeah. Oh, wow, long yeah. time ago. Actually, um, a, uh, like, uh, you remember, um, you remember Bangarang, right? Yeah. Uh, like, we gave him a hell of a, of a mind blow uh, just yesterday. Uh, he thought Bob Ross was still alive. I hate to ask. 
Who's Bob Ross? The, the painter. Oh. Like, you know, like the really calm guy, like with the big afro, the white guy. It doesn't bring up anything. You, okay, let me, let's see here. Bob Ross. That guy. Oh, okay. You don't, you don't recognize him? No. Wow, he's very famous. Like, um, a lot of people actually use him as ASMR now because of the, you know, the brush and oh. everything. Oh, okay. We're going to put a happy little tree over here oh. and a smiley little leg. <laughs> there, are no ac- there are no mistakes, only happy accidents. <laughs> That's actually his actual quote. Really? Like, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised you don't know who Bob Ross no. is. I am. Okay, well, now I'm the one who's yeah, got Yeah, now you're blown away. Two days wow. in a row, someone's gone... Uh, Explosive. It, it, so someone's lost their mind over Bob freaking Ross. Uh, but no, he died back in 1999, but he thought he was still alive because he was streaming live on Twitch. Mm. Uh, and it like it, it really sent him through a loop. He's like, dude, like the guy's been dead for 28 years. Like Apparently they weren't streaming live. Well, it's... it's, it's yeah. I yeah. Know. Yeah. Anyway, let's move back up to uh, 1972 here. Music concerts. Barbara Streisand, James Taylor, Carl King, and Quincy Jones performed benefit concert for George McGovern uh, for president campaign uh, at the fourth uh, at the forum in Inglewood, California. Yeah, huh? That's out here. Surprised they didn't go to that. That's a big McGovernite. Huh? Uh, in in Inglewood is that's you were there? You, did you go to Inglewood High School or something? Yeah. 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 So I am well, shocked. Well, the forum is in Inglewood. Yeah. Yeah. I am shocked that you weren't there. Well, I did go to one of his rallies. I didn't go to that. But I went to a rally. His, I think it was in Santa Monica. Now, this is weird. First appearance of San Diego Chicken. What the hell? San Their Diego mascot Chicken. It was a chicken. Oh, okay. Or is a chicken. Is a was. chicken. Okay, well, now that ex- explains things. Uh, we got uh, U.S. Masters Golf. The 43rd U.S. Masters Tournament, 1979, held at Augusta Natural Golf Course. Um, f- Fuzzy Zoller won his only Masters with a birdie on the second hole of a playoff with Ed Sneed and Tom Watson. Mm. Hmm. Good old Fuzzy Zeller. <laughs> How'd you get a name of Fuzzy? I don't know. Fuzzy Wuzzy was a bear. Fuzzy Wuzzy had no hair. Fuzzy Wuzzy wasn't so Fuzzy Wuzzy. Yeah. Have you ever seen a hairless bear? They're terrifying. <laughs> Wait, hold on a second. Hairless don't tell me bear. Tell me a picture of a hairless bear. <laughs> oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, let's move on, shall we? Yeah, I told you, terrifying. So, moving on up to 1986. Oh, you know, a double whammy here. Now we have some cricket. Uh, cricket. Viv Richard, century of 56 balls versus England in Antigua Test Cricket. That's a lot of balls for cricket. I was going to say, maybe made a pit stop to Chernobyl or something. Like, (laughs) wow. Cojones. Moving on up to 1990, PG Seniors Championship Men's Golf, PG National Golf Course. South African Gary Player won his third event title by two strokes from Chi-Chi Rodriguez. I never understood uh, the senior tour. Uh, you know, you're old. Retire. Well, I mean... It's nice they have a way to generate some income and not play at the level of the top professionals. I mean, what about the senior menu? menu? You're old. Stop eating. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. 1991, Magic Johnson set an NBA record for career assists with 9,898. Wow. Yeah. All right. Magic, man. Yep. Jay Leno, 1992, his final appearance as permanent guest host of The Tonight Show. All the way back then? Wow. I thought that was more recent. No, it's been a long time. Yeah. And I, 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 I wonder how he is, because last I heard about him, a, a car engine blew up in his face. Yeah, so, there was a fire and something. A couple things happened to him. Yeah, he, uh, like back to back or something. Yeah, yeah he is in a fire or something. Yeah, no, it, it was an automobile fire in his garage. Something went wrong and then it, like it hit his face or something, and he was in the hospital. He wasn't in like super critical condition or anything. Like he's fine. Yeah, you know, but like apparently he had an interview or something the next day and he couldn't uh. make it or something. But what I want to know is what happened to that guy who plays Hawkeye, he, who got ran over by his own tractor. Like I never heard about that. Yeah, we did. I told you, like, I, like he was, he like, because he's a real man. Like he actually does things around his, his property. Like he splits his own wood. Mm. You know, he tills his own field. He plows his own snow. You know, he works. Yeah. You know, he's not one of these poshy like pansy ass actor people. He actually works, and uh, he had this uh, this uh, snowcat. 
you know, snow plow or whatever, yeah. and something happened. It wasn't in gear or whatever, and like uh, it 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 ran over. Like he was doing something, and then like it got loose. It ran over uh, at least one of his legs, pouring blood. Uh, he did go into critical condition, but he didn't die. Um, but uh, there's some serious questioning whether or not he'll be in Marvel movies again if he can walk. Mm. Mm. You know, so I haven't heard anything about him. You know, like in a while, so. Anyway, moving on up to 1992, New York Islander Al Arbor ca- caught most NHL games, uh, 1,438. What is that? Oh, coached. Coached most NFL games. So he was, okay. So the, 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 the longest running coach. Yeah. At 1438. All right. We got Hall of Fame here in 1992. William Shatner and Leonard Nimoy and DeFrost Kelly inducted in the National Association of Broadcasters Hall of Fame. All right. So, um, uh, yeah, William Shatner has been to space, actually. Yeah. And Leonard Nimoy is in space. Live long and prosper. So. 1994, jazz singer Tony Bennett recorded a session for MTV's Unplugged series at Sony Studios in New York City, featuring the Ralph Sharon Trio and guest appearances by Elvis Costello and KD Ling. The album released, uh, the album released won two Grammy Awards. Huh. 1969, the 100th Boston Marathon. Moses Tanoi of Kenya took centenary men's title in 2 hours, 9 minutes, 15.9 seconds. Three Pete for Uta Pippig of Germany in women's race for 2 hours, 27 minutes, and 12 seconds. Okay. Now, here's something, like, you know, why don't they have both? Where's Moses Tanoi? Why do we only have the female representation? Where's the male representation? Oh. You know? No, yeah, looking no, for stuff. no. If they're gonna if they're gonna bitch and moan about stuff like that, I'm gonna start saying, okay, well then, where's it for this? Yeah. You know, you know, tit for tat. You know, either shut your mouth or join my side. 1997 disaster film Volcano, directed by Mick Jackson and starring Tommy Lee Jones and Anne Heche, premiered in South Korea. That's a weird spot for it to premiere. Yeah, that's odd, isn't it? Especially, it's in L.A. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, that's true. Like. I don't know. If dude, if I would have been like, okay, if if I was around and I had the money and everything, I would have secretly retrofitted the entire like you know Chinese theater. You know they have in like Hollywood yeah. where where they do the premieres. Yeah. I would have secretly put in a bunch of like you know uh, motion things, so that ah. way, so that way when the volcano goes, the whole theater starts shaking. Oh God, it's real! <laughs> put vibrators in the seats. But to answer your thing there, you got to look at you know why was it South Korea? So you guys say, hmm, who funded that movie? Ah, uh, yeah. That is, I never thought of that. Who did fund, who, you know what? Who funded the Volcano movie by Billy Jones? Uh, Volcano, okay. Um, uh, produced by those guys starring, well, it's in here somewhere. That's going to be a lot of digging, so I'm just going to put that in the underbar of the description for any viewers, if they so wish, to go down that rabbit hole and educate us about uh, about that. Going to move on up to the new millennium in the year 2000. Giant Sequoia National Monument proclamation signed by President Bill Clinton in California, preserving one-third of all giant sequoia groves, the world's largest tree. Wow, more something... La- more land grab. Well, not necessarily. It's preserving the trees. Like, we do need to preserve the redwoods. Yeah, no, I absolutely do, and I, I'm not. I'm not saying that a lot of land needs to be preserved, but it's still a land grab. But now, is this? Am I misreading that? National Monument proclaiming proclamation. Pro, uh, proclamation. Giant Sequoia National Monument proclamation. So this made the uh, this made that Giant Sequoia National Monument. It made it into a national monument. Yeah. It, it, okay. If, okay. You know, like I'm not disagreeing with you. It is a land grab, but if he didn't do this, then all of that probably would have been chopped down. It sounds like it was already the the property was already in the hands of the government, just proclaimed it as a national. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, because if it if they didn't proclaim it, then somebody could say, "Oh, hey, why do you have this? You're you're withholding resources from the from the consumer markets. You know, give it up, you tyrants." Yeah. And then. Uh, you know, it, it's really sad what happened, you know, to the Redwoods. Uh, I saw a video not too long ago where, um, like, uh, like the, the, the world's, you know, tallest and oldest tree and everything, it's, it's unknown 
uh, well, it, 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 it's known, but it's not on maps and everything, in order to protect it, because we know that vandals would go over there and start, you know, like, hacking off chunks of the tree to have it as a memento, or, like, spray paint it. People are savages. Um, but, uh... But this isn't a land grab. This is just no. proclaiming it to be a national monument. Yes. So, yeah, yeah. the land was already grabbed. Yep. Moving on up to 2012, Hologram of the late rapper Tupac featured on stage with Snoop Dogg and Dr. Dre at Coachella Music Festival. Yeah, like, uh, really, I think that's the start of, like, deep fake and everything. Because, you know, you make a hologram of somebody who's been dead. Mm, yeah. Like, so, yeah. like, what's, what's stopping, you know, somebody from, you know, eliminating a political rival and then having a deep fake and hologram in order to, to make it seem like they switched their side? Like, it's frightening what's coming up. Well, that was happening in 2012 as well. TV uh, TV comedy drama Girls, created by and starring Lena Dunham, premiered on HBO. Oh, and Adam Driver, that's the guy who played Kylo Ren. Mm. So. And we have an election of interest tonight. In 2013, Nicolas Maduro was narrowly elected president of Venezuela. Mm. Yeah. Bad dude. Yep. 2014, the U.S. TV series Fargo, created by Noah Hawley, starring Billy Bob Thornton, Allison Tolman, Colin Hanks, and Martin Freeman, premiered on FX. All right. Uh, here we go again. The good old neck. Novak Dokovic. And the guy looks like a giraffe. 2015, Loris World Sports Awards, Shanghai Grand Theater in Shanghai, China. Sportsman Novak Dokovic, sportswoman Genzebib Dialba, team German men's national football. Okay, I'm going to do it again. They have Novak Dokovic here. Why don't they have uh, Genzib Debaba? De Where's her representation? Yeah. Where's his representation Representation from her for? Where's her representation now? Okay. I am an equal opportunity bitcher. Okay? I will complain about everything. Well, I'll tell you, he still can't get into this country to play in some of the major tournaments. Yeah. Because he, he refused to get a vaccine. Yep. Still can't. However, he could sneak across the border and come in. Yep. That would be fine. Yep. Yeah, you know, like, if if the vaccine works, then how how is it on other people to have it for it to protect you? You know, that makes absolutely no sense. 2019, Aretha Franklin posthumously received the Pulitzer Prize Special Citation Honor, first individual woman to win since 1930. Wow. And damn right she got it. Aretha Franklin. Oh, the queen of rock. Yeah, who is currently being a victim of cancel culture because of all this, because of the, the, the natural woman song. They're going after her because of that. I told you that about, about yeah, that a while you did. ago. You did. Like, really? You're going after a dead black lady for something because of, of your gender politics. Wow. How racist. You know? 2019, Paris Cathedral of Notre Dame caught fire, toppling its spire and destroying its roof. And that's because uh, pre uh, Macron, the president, and still president of France yeah. for whatever reason... Like, the Yellow Vest riots, you know, you know about that. Yeah. Like, uh, you know, now look this up. Literally the day that he was supposed to, because he, he fled the country. Like, uh, the France was literally about to uh, execute this guy. Somebody actually, during all this, built a fully functioning uh, you know, um, guillotine in the public square in Paris, France. They were going to kill this guy the way that they did in seventeen hundreds, eighteen hundreds, all that stuff. Like they, they were the French were about to French, and he literally fled the country. And then he was he was coming back because on the day that this happened, he was supposed to give a speech to all the yellow vests because they're all up in arms about high gas prices and all that stuff. Oh, what a coincidence! A national tragedy to distract everybody and get everybody to hold their hands and sing Kumbaya while President Macron gets away like a like a clean thief. You know? So you're like by talking about the you're talking about the fire at Notre Dame. Yeah, yeah this is the anniversary of it. Uh, three, How four are they years doing ago. on the restoration? Uh, I think oh. they're okay. Actually, what the pisses, was, I tell you. Yeah. yeah. What pisses me off is that they're using a video game as blueprints uh, for to rebuild uh, the, those areas from uh, oh, wow. Assassin's Creed. Mm. Yeah. People are people are so people are so simp into Assassin's Creed. That they utilize a video game to, to rebuild historic... What's, how stupid. Absolutely yeah, stupid. Yeah, although I'm not going to lie, I do like playing Assassin's Creed, although I don't take everything that goes on in Assassin's Creed as actual history. 
Well, see, that's because you're intelligent, Alice. Most people well, are not you. intelligent. I've actually met people who think that uh, Assassin's Creed is historically uh, accurate. Like, people oh, wow. Are, people, yeah, no, this is why I absolutely hate it. It is dangerous. Okay. Assassin's Creed is dangerous. So, anyway, yeah, uh, welcome to the show, Alice. How you doing? Oh, I'm all right. Just letting you know I got confirmation I will be working tomorrow, so we might have to push the kicking the peanut a little later after I'm off work. Okay. So. I will do that. Yeah, I hope you don't mind, but yeah. It's your peanut. show. It's I'm not off. my my place to complain. It's your show. You you got the call. So. And speaking of today in history, I just heard thunder. Thunder. Thunder, thunder. Thunder! Lightning wow, and the thunder, wow, wow. thunder. Speaking of uh, history here today, we got an election of interest. In 2020, we have South Korea is first country to hold a general election under COVID-19. President uh, Moon Jae-in, uh, Moon Jae-in's ruling, Democratic Party wins a landslide. Huh. Ooh, all right. Well, uh, so they're like, yeah, we're just going to have an election during it. But didn't we? We did too during COVID. Hold on a second. Uh, that's that's a little suspicious. They have an election during the lockdowns, and a Democratic Party won in a landslide. Can anyone say stolen? <laughs> oh, uh, well, know you know. That. Oh, of course Some we do. Could, Some could argue that there were many stolen elections in many countries that year. If okay, let me let me let me put it this way: If you're waiting for a government official to come and tell you the truth, you're never going to get the truth. It's up to you mm. to put the p- puzzle pieces together yourself. Think. Well, that, that, that I'll agree with you on. I wouldn't believe the government on anything. Oh. Well, actually, I have an idea for the peanut conversation. I want to talk about the how the loss of uh, government and trust in the governments has uh, been in a decline since the assassination of JFK. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Oh. Now it's just yeah. ridiculous. Nobody, well, not nobody, but uh, <laughs> except the powers yeah, that be. Nobody a, wants to hear what the government has to say. A, vi- a vote of no confidence in our governments. Yeah. It happens. You know what we think when they say, "Hi, I'm from the government. I'm here to help." <laughs> but no, that's what is that what something Reagan said? Yep. Yep. Let me let me yeah, let me yeah. say this: an honest politician is just as common as a uh, as a virgin prostitute. <laughs> they don't exist. Wow. Wow. Whoa. Yeah. That, now that now that's some like funny and th- well, that's some funny and philosophical stuff right there. Yep. <laughs> well, not funny, but philosophical. Philosophical. It that. is funny. But anyway, it is funny, let's, yes. so let's maybe, continue so, on. So here. Mag is right. Funny and philosophical, baby. <laughs> oh, what we have here in 2021, we have a shooting at FedEx facility in Indianapolis, Indiana, it leaves eight dead after and five injured. Jeez. Wow. Jeez. Talk about going Some... postal. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm here all week. <laughs> I knew that was coming. Uh, but no, seriously, that that sucks. Not to not to dance on the graves of the dead, but yeah, that no, sucks. No, no, but no, I get it. Yeah, it's going. That it literally is going postal. Yeah. But uh, we also have in 2021, we have India recorded over 200,000 or 200,739 daily new cases of COVID-19 for the first time, with 1,038 deaths. And amid massive second wave. Propaganda, 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 and propaganda. Yeah, I didn't feel like doing the music concert unless you want to do it. Okay, well, let's just skip that. Before I move on to the person desk, audience, were there any articles that grabbed your attention more than most? Anything you wish we'd elaborated more about? Anything you would have liked to say if you've been here? Start a dialogue in the comments section. Right out of the bat, we have a big name in burst coming up here. Oh. Yeah, so. There you go. Ooh. Ooh. There she is. Is that right? Is it? As I joined back. All right. Thank you for joining, Loon. Bye, Pops. Bye-bye. Love you. Love you, too. (laughs) Yay. (laughs) I'm loved. Anyway, so we're going to start off first today with Leonardo da Vinci. He was born in 1452, died in 1519. Italian painter, sculptor, scientist, and visionary born in uh, Vinci. Is that say? Yeah. Vinci, yeah. Uh, Florence, Italy. Italy. Yeah, Vinci, the, the district of Vinci in Florence, Florence, Italy. There's one more thing about I would say him that they... The Assassin's Creed, there's one more the thing about him part? that they forgot to put in. Oh, what? Oh, yes, he's also an inventor. No, well, yeah, he is, but he's also uh, one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja true. Turtles. Yes, yeah. he is, Leonardo. Yeah. Well, it's just Leonardo, but he's yeah. named after Da Vinci. Yeah. 
Uh, Leonardo DiCaprio was named after Leonardo da Vinci too, actually. Yep. What are you doing with your ear, Ramos? What? Yeah. What are you doing with your ear? I can't see it on the it? screen here. What? No, it's not the same guy. But oh, there was oh, a painter that did that. Oh, you're thinking about? <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, oh, what was his name? It, um, it reminded me of that guy. I, I, hey, um, I know his uh, name. Uh, Harry Thunder. Harry Thunder. Vincent Van Gogh. Yeah, Van yeah. Gogh. That's what, I it literally me of that. came into my brain as Google was loading it. So there we go. So. Yeah, Van Gogh. Yeah. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Changed the well, we also have I changed the new and I uh, did a little trimming. Ah, look at Dude, you. Dude, we have a Guru Nanak. Fancy. Ooh. Yeah, he's a fa that's a fancy name right there. I love his picture. Yeah. <laughs> He was born today in 1469, died in 1539. He was the founder of the religion of uh, Sikhism. 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 Sikhism, yeah. Sikhism, yeah. And the first Sikh, uh, Sikh uh, guru born in Rabwai de Tawadi in, in Pakistan, uh, Punjab in Pakistan. Yep. There we go. Uh, his his oh, picture kind of looks like he's going, going what's up? <laughs> like... Who huh. might be thunderstorm out here? Woo -hoo -hoo. Uno Moss, good, uh, good miss. Uh, you're you're not picking up. Are you talking or? No, oh. I was I was lip syncing. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you're gonna take this next one here, three for three. Yeah, I'll do three for three. We have Leonard Euler, uh, born in 1707, died in 1783. He was a Swiss. Mathematician Euler's constant, born in Basel, Switzerland. What uh, is Euler's constant? Euler's constant um, is a mathematical constant, usually denoted by the lowercase Greek letter gamma, defined as a limiting difference between the harmonic series and the natural logarithm. Uh, it has a binary, apparently, um, a decimal, hexadecimal. Um, it says here, Euler's number is an important constant that is found in many contexts and is the base for natural logarithms. An irrational number represented by the letter E, Euler's number is 2.71828 dot dot dot, where the digits go on forever wow. in a series that never ends or repeats, similar to pi. Dang. Oh, okay. Well, well, the more you know, right? Yeah, that's actually like, you know, like once I was reading the dot dot dot, I'm like, oh, this sounds a lot like pi. <laughs> so. Yeah. I was like, I was kind of like, I thought the name sounded familiar. God, this one like going that that one of those equations kind of sounds like pi. Yep. Uh, Mr. Ramos, uh, do you want to take a couple? Uh, yeah, I do. Yeah, sure. All right. Come on. For sure. In the year 1875, James J. Jeffries, an American heavyweight boxer, was born in Carroll, Ohio. Huh. He has the same initials as jo James Jonah Jameson. Or whatever his Triple name J. is. Yeah. Triple J. Look at that. Ooh. 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 This guy. Nikita oh, Lord. Khrushchev. Khrushchev. He was born today in 1894. He was the first secretary of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union from 1953 to 1964, was born in Kalinovka, Rus Russia. Yep. And, uh, and Rhombus, you've seen Death of Stolen with us, right? I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, I haven't seen it with y'all, but I've, oh. I have seen it. So that's that's uh, yeah. who Steve Buscemi plays. Oh. Yeah. yeah! Okay. Yeah, remember? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So. And then, yeah, and then Malfoy plays Zukov. Pretty shady. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Malfoy plays Zukov. Every, everyone's favorite character in that movie. What? Zukov. Zukov is awesome. Malfoy was in that? Like, Just from, for the meme. From, from uh, Harry Potter? Yeah, the guy who played uh, Malfoy yeah. Uh, yeah. apparently yeah, played Yeah, Malfoy's Zukov. dad. Yeah. Lucius? Yes, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, Lucius. He plays as Lucius Malfoy in that yeah. movie. Oh, well, so Malfoy's... Oh, okay, no, I know that mm -hmm. actor, so Mal, the father of Malfoy. Because, yeah. like, he said he wasn't going to act again after mm -hmm. the Harry Potter series. Well, I don't think he has. He, he did. He's play. in Death of Stalin. He plays uh, Field Marshal thought, George no. Zuko. I thought you were thinking... I thought, 
I thought you were saying it was the guy that played the father of Malfoy that yes. was in that movie because I, I recognized him in that, but not the, the not the. No, not he, Draco. Yeah. No, I'm talking about the dad, yeah, the no. guy who played yeah. the, ga- yeah, the guy yeah, who played Lucius. Draco's yeah. Malfoy's father, Lucius Malfoy, who tried to kill Harry Potter with an Avagadabra and got oh, intercepted sorry. by I Dobby. That, that actor played uh, Field Marshal Georgi Zukov uh, in the Death of Stalin. He, he also he was also the British soldier that killed uh, Mel Gibson's son too in uh, the Patriot. Oh, he was the oh wow. He's. Uh, like that, he's also a smart scientist with the glasses, talking about how, like in the movie uh, Armageddon with Bruce Willis, saying like, you know, he's saying like if you drill into it and you know he's like a firecracker in your hand, that's the same guy too. Oh, he's been okay. a lot of movies. Hmm. Well, yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's continue on up here. So, yeah. Oh. I think it's still Ooh. Robus's turn if he wishes. Uh, in the year yep, 1908, Peter no, Gray right. was it? an American actress and second wife Charlie Chaplin was born in Hollywood, California today. Wow. Uh, if anybody's going to be a wife Happy of Charlie birthday. Chaplin, you know, you better be born in Hollywood. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be. Mm. Boo. Oh, we're going to miss the cool part of the form. That sucks. It's cringe. It's cringe. Uh, speaking of cringe, this guy. <laughs> yeah. Cringe. Oh, good lord. Hell. You want to take this one? This is your third? No, his last that was his last. Yeah, I was just saying, oh, that was I my third. He was, oh, he's already done three? Oh, wow, yeah, that I don't was, know how to it's count. your turn. Yeah, yeah, it's your, yeah, it's your turn, we Alexander. We got Kim Il-sung, born on this date in 1912, unfortunately. He is the founder and dictator and supreme leader of North Korea from 1948 to 1994. Born in mayonnaise, Japanese Korea. I'm not going to try to... Meng Yongle? He's born in... He was, ba- he was born in mayonnaise? He was born in marmalade. I don't know. Born in marmalade. It says mayonnaise to uh, me. Harold Washington, 1922, the first black U.S. mayor of Chicago for the Democrat Party from 83 to 87. Born in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. Chicago. Chicago. And then we got Vigdis Finn Bogatotir. Uh, 1930, uh, fourth nice. president of Iceland from 1980 through 96, and the world's first woman democratically elected president, born in Reykjavik, Iceland. Ah, so but the she's first. still kicking. Yeah, 93. Yeah, wow. she's 95. Or 93, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, she's 93. Yep. Dang, she's been. Ooh, wow, she's been around a minute. Yeah. And then we got Elizabeth Ooh. Montgomery, 1933, a U.S. actress, Samantha slash Serena Bewitched, born in Los Angeles, California. I know where that's at. Oh, oh, yeah, that's right. She did die back then. That sucks. Uh, yeah, 95. Oh. Okay. The, the little nose twinkle lady. Uh, <laughs> oh, nose twinkle? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, 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 she, yeah, okay. Yeah, she was in the witch. She was... She was the witch. Yeah. And we've got a thing from the L.A. Doctors. You've gotten uh, uh, Robot Alice. Robot Alice. Davis. Robot. Sorry, can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. All right, well, we've got an L.A. Dodgers baseball player. Uh, we have Willie Davis, was born today in 1940, died in 2010. He was an American Major League Baseball center fielder for the Dodgers, born in Mineral Springs, Arkansas. Huh. So I wonder if he was actually born in a mineral spring, you know, like an at-home earth, but like instead of a bathtub, it's a spring. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> a bathtub birth, I get it. Yeah. We have Robert Lefkowitz today, is 80 today, he was born in 1943, he's an American physician, the Nobel PC Prize in Chemistry. No, prize, born Nobel Prize. New York City, I know, PC Prize, I like to say it like that. Uh, but it's wrong, Alice, please don't be invalid with history. Yeah, okay, so a Nobel Prize for Chemistry. But I know, it's just because of the noble thing. I'll go noble PC Bryce. I I, I, anyway. I know what you're doing with the strong bag reference, but like there are there is yeah. I, I'm I'm not trying to be that guy. It's just like No, 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 I get it, I get it. But yeah, he got a Nobel Prize for chemistry. He was born in New York City, New York. Alright. Who else do we have? Who? Alright. Oh We have Emma Thompson's birthday today. She's sixty four, born in nineteen 19- 
Robot. Babe. Robot. Robot. Babe. Robot. <laughs> yep, probably still. Beep. Just read it for me. Zero one one zero zero one zero one two three four five. We got Emma Thompson, nineteen fifty nine, a British actress Thank you. Thank you. Uh, for Henry the Fifth. Howard's in an Oscar of nineteen ninety two. Born in London, England. Huh. Fruit Chan. What the hell what kind of a name is that? Uh, uh, Rhombus, you want to take this one, nineteen fifty nine as well? What the? <laughs> in nineteen fifty nine, Fruit Chan, Hong Kong film director, born in. Guangdong, China. Oh, God. <laughs> what a Gets name. Canceled. That sounds like a character out of Sin Chan, I swear. Felipe <laughs> <laughs> of Belgium. It's his 63rd birthday today. In the year 1960, King of the Belgians from 2013 to the present. Born in Brussels, Belgium. Ah, so I wonder if he's sprouted yet. Brussels sprout. Yeah. Huh. Has Felipe sprouted? <laughs> oh no. Oh. Yes. In nineteen eighty two. In nineteen eighty two, Seth Rogan. It's his, today's his forty first birthday. He's a Canadian actor and writer. The four-year-old virgin in the interview. He's also really well known for the Pineapple Express, yes. and he's also Donkey Kong in the new Mario movie. Isn't he also in uh, This Is the End? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's like one of the main characters. Yeah, he is the main character of that movie as well, along with Franco and those guys. Yeah, um, he was born in Vancouver, British Columbia. Oh man, that's where my, that's like where the Golden Moon was born, Vancouver. Huh? Vancouver, Canada. Eh? Ooh. Hey! Another person who was in, in This Is The End. Look at that. She's awesome, though. She's actually cool, though. Yeah. I like Emma Watson. She's she's an amazing actor. She or brought actress. them in that movie. I know. That was, well, oh, because that was they funny. were discussing uh, giving her the struggle snuggle. So. Yeah, no, they were. Yeah, she was like, Ugh. She was, she was <laughs> understandably <laughs> grossed out. She's older than my boyfriend, ew. <laughs> and she doesn't look a day over 20. Hmm. She doesn't, doesn't look, look a day like over a 25. She still looks super young. Anyway, uh, we got Emma Watson here in uh, 1990. Uh, English actress, Hermione Granger in Harry Potter series, as well as, uh, you know, This is the End, and she's been in... Oh, uh, the... Um, Rudy and the Beast. What is it, The Circle? Or... Uh, 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 yeah, the, or whatever. It's like that one with Tom movie with Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, the the social media one. Um, I think yeah, it's called yeah, the, the Circle. I think it's called the Circle. That's a good movie. We got you know what? Let's have an impromptu movie night tonight. I got to show you guys the Circle. It's really good. No, I've seen it, but yeah, I haven't seen it in a few years. It's actually a fairly decent movie. Why does she look like she's naked? Uh, oh shit! Oh, it's just one of the, of she has like one of the she has one of those strapless uh, dresses. Uh, God, she looks like she's naked. Like it, it's it's it's. I, well, I, Emma Watson. She has a dress she's on. Naked. She's wearing a dress. No, but no, but like, like you know, this. It's like she's not here. wearing straps. Yeah, but no, this you see a yeah, lot no, more of her of her chin. It 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 it, it just doesn't look. Uh, I'm getting uncomfortable just looking at that. Uh, Maisie Williams, 1997, an English actress in Game of Thrones, born in Bristol, England. Let's. I don't yeah, want to keep she, staring at that picture. That's disturbing me. She she's actually like my favorite character, actually, and one of my favorite characters in Game of Thrones. So, anyway, Alice, let's get on into deaths here, Lady Death. Oh yes, we'll start with 1053. We have uh, Godwin, the Earl of Wessex, dies at the age of 52. Huh. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's right. Oh yeah. shit, snacks. Today was the day of the assassination of Abraham Lincoln, born in 1809, died in 1865, was the 16th U.S. Pre president. Not to be mistaken for a Democrat, he was actually kind of the forefounder of the Republican Party. Yep. From 1861 to 65, he dies from a gunshot wound at the age of 56 years old. Yep, he got shot yesterday in history. So. Oh yeah, and he died today, technically. Yeah. yeah. Nine hours yeah. later, so... 
Yeah. Oh god. So he actually survived a gunshot wound for nine hours. Well, I probably brain dead. You know, like. Yeah, so. more than likely brain dead. And then we also have in 1875 years later, we have Emma Willard, the American women's rights activist and educator who founded the first school of women's higher education in the United States. She dies at the age of 83 today. And then this next one, that's interesting. Oh, hang on, that one got a little screwy there. Hey, I can see it now. Okay, we have Sophia Pervolskia, Soviet icon, uh, I, uh, in the Soviet ice icon, icon yeah. Yeah. Aristoc- yeah, yeah, this is 1881. So, uh, she's a Soviet icon, aristocrat, and socialist revolutionary, Nur- uh, Narodanya who helped orchestrate the assassination, the successful assassination of Tsar Alexander II of Russia. She was executed by hanging at the age of 27. Yeah, oh, she's one of the 27s. Yeah, well, she was also a, 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 star, a, a stalwart believer in uh, Marxism, you know, the Soviet yeah. Revolution. So, yeah, yeah. It, it's too bad they didn't get to her earlier. Yeah, it's too bad. So sad. Yeah. Anyway, but it's now someone else's turn. Uh, if Romiser wants to go, uh, now is the time. Matthew Arnold, in the year 1888, was an English poet and critic. Dover Beach died at the age of 65. Huh. Look at that hair and, like, staff. Like, uh... Side you know things. he was from that era. Dude, you he looks like he's, he's in mid-transformation becoming a werewolf. Seriously. He's just not a teen wolf. Gotta fangs. Huh. <laughs> just gotta add the excessive amount of fangs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. This guy, okay. Hey! Oh, there's a lot of... <laughs> big people here. Oh, yeah, because didn't the, yeah, the Titanic thing just happened. Yeah, Titanic hit yesterday and sank this morning. Yeah. So. Yep. Yeah, in the year 1912, Edward Smith was an English naval captain of the RMS tar- Titanic. Tartanic? He dies. <laughs> Tartanic. Tartanic. Yeah, the, tar- the Tartanic. The Tartar Sauce. <laughs> Tartanic. Tartar Sauce Tanic. Tartar Sauce. It is now. It is now the Tartanic. Oh, my God. It's Tartar Sauce now. <laughs> God. It'll sink now it's a your rust boat. bucket in the middle of the ocean. By the way, did you know? Fun fact: the swimming pool in the Titanic is still full of water. What? Hmm. The swimming? No, you don't say. <laughs> Good lord, Xander! <laughs> you were just waiting for that joke, aren't you? Uh, well, it's a, it's a. But it's, it's a chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess my comedy that, like, career is really sinking, isn't it? Have you heard of the hauntings for like when they like they move around the Titanic uh, rumblings that they have like lifted from the ocean floor parts of the Titanic and stuff that they've uh, recorded uh, hauntings and stuff uh, in those displays at museums? Yeah. I wonder if Jack showed up. Oh god. <laughs> Kate Winslet. You just see you just see like a really young Leo oh. DiCaprio haunting them. Oh my god. <laughs> But we also have this other guy here. I don't know why this isn't highlighted. He was a big name back in the day. In oh, also in the year 1912, Jake, John Jacob Astor the Fourth, American businessman and soldier, is the richest passenger aboard the Titanic. He died aboard the Titanic at the age of 47. I believe Astor is the one who funded the Titanic. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, well, he made some very grave, like, mistakes when it came to, uh, you know, the situation with, uh, life support vessels. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. We got Hugh S. Oh. Johnson, 1942, U.S. head of the National Recovery Administration and member of FDR's Brain Trust, died of pneumonia at 60. Huh. And Robert... Well, also, I think... In- for like for in history, I did it ever go over like for 1912 because I wasn't here for it. Did uh oh no I was. We did we not read like how like what's so a 1,200 passengers pe- perished on the Titanic? Yeah, today? we did. We covered that today. Okay. All right. Yeah. I thought you did. Okay. Yeah. No, so I, I, sure. I went on a rant about okay. Well, where's where's the equal representation then, huh? You know, women and children yeah. first. That's bullshit. Like yeah, I actually wanted to I wanted to bring it up back then that there's a comedian I forgot who it was. And this is before it was discovered that all that, like, uh, the, the pay gap was all, you know, bullshit. Um, 
but it's like, you know, like, oh, why do you get men paid, you know, like 30 cents more than women? Because on the on the chance that there's a situation like the, like the Titanic, the men have to sit there and die, you know? That's why we get paid more. Now, well, that's... also the reason why men will generally get paid more is because they generally will take the more dangerous jobs, which... Exactly. Exactly. But I don't want to get into all that more right dangerous. Maybe we'll talk about yeah, it tomorrow on the peanut. Thing. We can actually talk about it. Take a we have a lot kind of, of things to talk want. about for the peanut. Actually, if you look at the channel, it's gotten gotten flooded this week. So, um, oh lord. Anyway, we got Robert Musil, 1942, an Austrian writer, man on him, uh, Eigenschaften, died at the age of 61. Okay. And uh, back to you, Miss Alice, with uh, Manuel Rojas. Oh, well, we've got a Manuel Ro Rojas. Born in 1892, died in 1948. Was the fifth president of the Philippines from 1946 to 48. Dies of a heart attack at the age of 56. I think he maybe died in office. Heart attack? Because he died in the uh, same year he stopped serving. 48. Possibly. He was only there for two terms, so yeah, he has to have been. For two years. Uh, he has to have been in office. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so he, yeah. And then we also have a death today. We have Wallace Beery, born in 1886, died in 1949. He was an American circus performer from the Ringling Brothers Circus and actor. Alas, a gentleman. Dinner at 8, dies from a heart attack again. Another heart attack victim at the age of 64. Huh. Hmm. That's strange. Yeah. What's with the heart attacks on the even numbers? That's a little Yeah, concerning. you know. Is he a heart attack, too? <laughs> no, it just doesn't tell you. <laughs> Jean-Paul Sartre, Sartre, or Sartre, a Jacquois existentialist, ex ex existentialist, thank you, philosopher and writer, Lemur. He had a Nobel Prize in 1964, was declined, apparently, and died at the age of 74. Yeah, he declined oh, the he prize. Did, oh, he declined it. Yeah. You decline the prize. Yep. All right. Ooh, we got another. We have another Jaqua. I love his scarf. He also kind of looks like Q from James Bond movies. Yeah, he does first. a little at bit. First, at first glance, it looks like Q. A little bit. <laughs> oh, grow up, 007. Don't touch that. That's oh, my yeah, lunch. <laughs> They put John Cleese as Q. Well, no, they, his name is R. So now it's R. So, you know, R. Q, then R. What is he? R. I don't He's know. He's a QR code. Oh, God. I, well, you know, well, if you ever watch, like, like the, the, at the beginning of the movie of, uh, what is it, uh, the meaning of life. You have that little short film where, like, it's a bunch of the parliament of whatever. And you have all a bunch of old people, like, becoming pirates. Uh I, I have not seen that, but I just got an oh idea. My God. I just got so an idea. I should get a tattoo of a barcode on my forehead uh, that reads zero dollar, you know, zero zero. So that way, like, they'll, people will know that there's no sense going on up here. Why? Uh, I thought you did have some sense. Well, I have, I have, <laughs> you know, sense. I have sight, uh, hearing, taste, touch, and uh, <laughs> hear, I don't know what. I know there's five. Smell. There we go. So, anyway, who's this Gene Cadet guy? This is John Cadet. Robot. Robot. Probably Gene Cadet. Oh yeah, Gene Cadet died on the state in 1986. He's a French novelist. <clears throat> pardon me. The Thief's Journal and Our Lady of the Flowers, as well as a playwright in The Balcony of the Maids, died of throat cancer at 75. Ugh. Well, I would say his name is Jean. Jean Genet. Uh, well, this one's a perfect one for you, Alice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> she bang, Who you she bang? bang. Oh, no, Who no, you no. bang? Who you bang, baby? Oh, God, robot. Beep. Who you uh, bang? Uh, Who oh. you bang, bang? Who you bang, bang? Uh, Hu Yubang, in 1989, a Chinese Communist official and General Secretary of the Chinese Communist Party from 1982 through 87, died of a heart attack, thankfully, at the age of 73. You know, better late than never. Another heart attack. Yep. 
Yeah, another heart attack. Then we got Greta Garbo. Hopefully she wasn't garbage. Uh, died on the state in 1990. A Swedish actress in Anna Karenia and Camille. Died at 84. What a what a crap name, Garbo. Damn. Like that's what you usually like. You know, oh, you're Garbo. You know, like garbage. Like that's an unfortunate last name. Oh man. Oh wow. That is a this garbage is gonna turn into something strong by the time it hits New Jersey. Oh my God, dude, this guy, Alice. You gotta take this guy. Oh, we got Pol Pot. Born in 1925, died in 1998. He was a Cambodian dictator from 1976 to 79 and a revolutionary who led the Khmer Rouge Rouge, Rouge, from 63 to 97, died at the age of 72. Yeah, God. Jeez. Yeah, he was a not not good. Pol Pot, one of the one of the most notorious genocide causers. Like this this guy, oh evil, 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 evil. Oh. Evil. Evil, 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 and that shall conclude the show. Evil, evil, evil. Once again, you can check the underbar in the description for any links you may find interesting, including but not limited to all things Omni Coalition. For your dose of Passive Daily, we stream every day at uh, ten o'clock in the morning Pacific time, which is eleven Mountain, twelve Central, and one p.m. Eastern. One p.m. Eastern. <laughs> I got both of you. Uh, anyway, I oh, I gotta wait. <laughs> for all of you and all of us, I am Xander. I am Father Pump, a.k.a. Gemini Abraham. You're not Big Papa Pump? Big Fist Pump. <laughs> and I'm who, I am who is Alice. <laughs> all right. And we also had the Golden Moon in the show today, too. Yes, Don't we forget did, that. during the main body, yep. Anyway, and of course, you viewer are you. And until you catch us uh, tomorrow, don't forget to look right and left at every intersection. Rate five thumbs and subscribe. Toodles! Hi-ho!